Hi everyone, in this video we will see how to manage an issue in ERP Next. Now issue comes under the support module and support is an important part of any business. Let's say that you have an e-commerce company and customers buy certain products from you. Now it's obvious that your customers will face some grievances about the product or maybe they'll have certain query for which they might want to reach out to you. So all of that can be managed using issue in ERP Next. It, is, it comes under support module. So support is basically an important section. It is an important module. So let's begin. Now how an issue or support ticket can be created. So it can be created in two ways. One is through the web portal where a customer can log in and they can submit the issue through a web form. Let me show you. So here if you see I am logged into one of the customer's account and in the sidebar we have all these different web forms. So here if you see we have issue and we can go, go inside that. Let me show you. And we can click on new. And here customer can write that okay the product that they bought. So let's say the product not working. They can write it all over here and they can also attach the invoice for reference and they can just save it. So what will happen is the now what the issue will be created in the back end. Let me show you. So here if I go, I'm right now in the support module. I'll go to the issue list and here if you see the product not working. So it was created by a customer like here if you see Henry created this. So that is one way to create an issue. The another way is that when a customer emails you on a support address. So let's say that your company have an email address uh, that is support at your company name dot com. So if any of your customer emails on that particular address, so issue will be automatically created over here, like in this similar way, the one that like the way this one was created, you will have a similar issue created. So let me show you how you can do that. So this is an email account. So you need to go into the email account list. And so like this is one of the one of our email address over here. Now, if you scroll down, you can see the option as append to yeah over here. Now this append to option includes a lot of other doc types over here. So I'll say issue. So what is happening is if any customer is emailing on this particular email address over here, what's happening is issue is being created. So I hope this is clear, like how it is working. So that's all about how an issue is created. Now the next important concept is service level agreement, which comes under issue. So service level agreement, it is used to define the timeline for which the customer will be receiving the response. So if you might have seen like if we reach out to some company for our support risk request, they usually have this timeline stating that, okay, we will respond to you in six to seven business days. So service level agreement is something similar to that. So let's see how we can create a service level agreement and how we can use it in issue. Now before using service level agreement, you need to go to the support settings and you need to click on track service level agreement over here. Then only that will be applicable. So after this is done, we will go ahead and we will create a new service level agreement. So I'll go to the support module only and I'll create from there only. So here if you see, we have this option. So I'll click on service level agreement and I'll say add service level agreement. All right, and I'll name it as SLA, basically just a short form of that. Now here you can specify the employee group, basically which employee will be managing this particular service level agreement. So for now, I'll keep it as empty because it's not that important. Now holiday list is important because um, here we are claiming that, okay, on particular day, we won't be there so that's why holiday list is important. Now next is NTT types. So we are here we are claiming that for which type of customer or for which territory this particular service level agreement is valid. So here if you want you can add a customer group or you can add a territory and here we can add an entity like all territories. So this particular service level will be valid for all the territories. Now if you want to select only a particular one then we can say India. So for now, I'll just select the all territories over here. Now here is a condition for this service level agreement assignment. So like if the here, if you see, we have the different condition examples. So similarly, if your requirement have certain conditions which you need to apply on the service level agreement, then you can add it over here. 
for now i'll keep it as blank now there there is a start date and end date like how long will this particular agreement be valid so if i say that okay it's vast, it will start from today and it will be valid only till 31st of december so that's how it will work now here we have pause sla on basically pause service level agreement on so i'll add as on hold okay after saving i'll just add it now here we have the response and resolution time now in issue we have three different priorities one is low one is high and one is a medium so we can say that low priority and we can add high priority and we'll add a medium priority now for each priority we need to add a response time resolution time and so let me just go ahead and add a response time here so if an issue is of low priority so we are stating that the response time should be let's say of six hours okay now if for some reason what happens is if we did not response in if we do not respond to any issue ticket within six hours or if we respond after six hours the service level agreement will just fail now for high let's say you need to respond in two hours and for medium it's three let's say four and resolution time is basically you are resolving the issue so whatever query customer have you are resolving that or if customer is facing any grievances so you need to resolve that in this particular amount of time that we are setting it here so if you fail to resolve it then obviously the service level agreement will fail now this particular resolution time obviously needs to be more than the response time so i'll say eight over here and here i'll say resolution time is three and here I'll say resolution time is six. That's done. And next here we are spe specifying the support hours. So you need to add all the weekday depe weekdays depending upon when you are going to be active. And also you need to specify the start time here. So let's say I'm saying that zero and end time 24. So consider that it's like a 24 seven service um, on Monday for now. I'll remove this Tuesday, else I'll have to go ahead and add, add each week. So, all right, let's save it. Select a default priority, all right. So you also need to select a default priority. So if I say medium priority, so what will happen is whenever any issue will be created, it will be considered as a medium priority only. Like that will be the default priority unless you change it specifically. So now I have created it. Now all we have to add this boss SLA over here. Let me select, okay, why am I not able to add it? All right, now after refreshing, I got this option over here. So we can say that pause SLA on hold. So I'll say that the service level agreement will be paused on this particular status in issue will come back to it okay i'll save it so now we have created our service level agreement and i'll say that this is enabled and let's say that this is a default service level default service level agreement already exist all right let me go ahead and i'll not make it so now this one is the default service level agreement so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll create an issue and we will see if everything is working according to this or not. So let's go to the customer. I'll go and I'll create a new issue. So I'm creating it through the web portal. All right, let's say subscription not started yet. Consider that a customer bought a subscription from the website and subscription is not active yet. So he will just send this issue and save it. So now your information has been submitted. I'll go and check in the issue list. So here if you see there is a subscription not started. And here if you see we have time to respond four hours, time to resolve six days. Now the reason why it is this is because we have added it over here if you see in medium is the default priority right so we have time to respond four hours so basically within four hours we should respond 
and there is a resolution time that is 6 hours so that if you see it is showing over here properly now we also have like we put this over here that is pause SLA on on hold so I want to show you how it works so let, let's go over here and I, now the status is open I'll say on hold and I'll just save it so you just notice what happens over here so if you see it is showing that SLA is on hold since a few seconds basically we are we we are avoiding the service level agreement from failing so that's why we have that option now I'll make it open again and I'll save it okay time to respond has been fulfilled now the reason why it is showing is fulfilled is because I have made a status change over here and uh, so if it will be resolved if I just click on close what will happen is it will be resolved so here if you see the uh, we are getting that okay service level agreement has been fulfilled so that's how it is now let's go ahead and create one more issue and I'll just save it now I'll go to the issue list again and what we'll do is let's try to change the priority and see the time to respond and this time to resolve changes or not so I'm changing it to high priority has been changed to high and here here if you see the time to respond has changed and time to resolve is also changed so as soon as you reply on an email like even if you email the customer like let's say we I'm emailing that hello Henry we are looking into your issue right now we'll get back to you in some time thanks and send so now when we respond here if you see it changed from time to respond to it became as fulfilled and here we also have this response details like whenever you responded all that details will be recorded over here and resolution will be for example if I close this so here it will show the time when this particular issue was closed and how much time it took for the closing the issue so basically using service level agreement is important because it is capturing all the details as in how the support requests are being managed so it's one of the important aspects now if you want to reopen any issue you can just click on reopen and that's it it will be it will be open and here this uh, service level agreement will continue as it was so that was all about the issue and the service level agreement. I hope this video was clear. If you have any doubt, you can ask the question and we will try our best to clear it. Now the email which was sent to a customer, customer can also see those uh, response in the web portal over here. So here if you see, I have written hello. We're looking into your issue right now. We just sent that an, as an email. So that is added as a comments over here. Now if Henry like if a customer responds to this over here like he will leave a comment that okay thank you submit so now that can be displayed over here I'll go to that and I'll refresh so here if you see he commented commented thank you so this way the conversation can be managed so this way the conversation can be managed thank you so much for watching